Cindy Crawford. I wish. You should be so lucky. Nice specimen. I should get plenty for this one. If you get her. And why shouldn't I? I have several legitimate claims on her. Name one. Gluttony, avarice, pride, using slugs and payphones. Typical human weaknesses is all. <laughs> That's enough. But wait against faith or hope or charity. What about fear, anxiety, curiosity? Merely lifted by peace and joy and love. What about jealousy, hatred, and laziness? But what about forgiveness and kindness and brushing her teeth after meals. Oh, you wait, man. I'm taking this lady. Oh, no, you're not. <laughs> Get away from her. She's mine. Oh, no, she isn't. As long as the power of the other is present, neither one of us can claim her. And as you can plainly see, I'm present. Oh. I thought you were just a figment of my imagination. Okay. Just so we don't waste all day at this, I'll offer you a simple solution. What's that? Well, uh, I'll offer you 10000 right here on the spot. 10000 what? Dollars, dummy. Oh, no, no, no. I couldn't possibly take money for a soul. Would you take diamonds? No. Emeralds? No. A brand new car? Definitely not. All right. If you won't take anything for her, then uh, how about a trade? What kind of a trade? Well, uh, I'll have this one and uh, you can have the next two. Why would you give me the next two? Just because I'm wearing red doesn't make me a bad guy. Hmm. No, I don't think a trade's a good idea. I have a superior to report to, you know. Well, I could promise to leave your mother alone for a year. Have you been bothering my mother again? Only on Sunday. You just leave my mother out of this. Stay away from her. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I just happen to know that your superior wants you to come home. What? Well, I have the message right here somewhere. Let me see that. <laughs> Not so fast. What would you give me for this small item of such great importance? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. But it's an important message from your leader. How do I know it's from my leader? Would I lie to you? About as fast as a snake would crawl on its belly. Fine. We'll just pretend I don't have this. Just forget I ever mentioned it. Uh, I will. And when you get in trouble, just remember that I tried to help you, but you were too good to listen to a devil. You got that right. Too bad you don't trust me. Good old Honest Joan, they used to call me. I thought you wanted to forget it. Will they be angry with you for not complying with this message? Well, Just I'm... detail it. <laughs> not on her life. Well, there are other ways of checking in, you know. Really? How? Well, I'll phone in. You'll phone in? Well, the nearest phone is ten blocks away. Aren't you afraid to remove your powerful presence? I'll manage. <laughs> that colorful ignoramus. A little slick tongue whips any angel, and he fell for the old note routine. Such a dummy. I thought you were up to no good. <laughs> what can I say? Not much. Uh, I have one question. What's that? How'd you get to a phone so fast? I didn't use a phone. Well, then how'd you find out about the note? Walkie-talkie. Walkie-talkie? Yes, you know, walkie-talkie. Never would have guessed you had one. Well, we have a few tricks up our sleeves, too, you know. Well, the only trick I have left is to scream you away. And I want this person. Well, you can't have her. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. Ah, oh, what is that disgusting smell? Demon Delight. Like it? It's repugnant. Since when have you become a judge of fine perfumes? Since I stood close to you. You seem to be missing the finer things in life, my dear. Like the smell of sweet perfumes, the beauty of a bouquet, the uh, thrill to a dry tongue. Have you ever tried Crazy Kisses by Casper? No, sounds repulsive. No, but it's not repulsive. Cool, clear water to the thirsty, and I just happen to have some on me if you care to take a small sip. No, thank you. Ah, so swiftly sobering, so deliciously delightful, so perfectly quenching, it sure does take the edge off your tongue. Mm, what's in it? Water. That's all? Certainly. Well... 
Maybe just a small sip. Help yourself. Hmm. Are you sure there's just water in this? Oh, yes. It's just such pure water that it tastes different. Hmm. Oh, not too much. A little go a long way. Hmm. Oh, I, I feel lightheaded. It's just the altitude you've been flying, my dear. What? Who's she? Uh, your late cousin. Here, let me help you sit down. Cousin, why are you laying on the ground? Don't you know that it's hard down there? Your cousin really can't hear you. <laughs> oh. Sorry, but we must be going. Oh, no, no, no. My, my cousin go with you? Well, certainly. We have things to do. Well, I'm sorry that my friend and I have to be leaving, but... You, you, be... you, you said she was my cousin. Oh, silly me. Uh, I'm talking about my friend there on the ground. See, you're confusing your cousin with my friend. That person's name isn't Cousin Agnes. Who is she? Uh, Samantha. My friend Samantha. Yeah. You tricked me. This, this stuff has made me in, in, in drunk and confused. I came here for that person. You are smashed, my dear. I may be smashed, but I'm not lying. Oh, brilliant statement. Wasn't bad if I do say so myself. You do realize that your state has weakened your powers. You've been weakened by other spirits. I have won this case, my dear. Oh, no, you haven't. No, what have you done? Uh, my, my my powers may be weak, but my body isn't. Oh, I know. It would take a crane to get you off. Uh, you can't fool me. I, I, I think I'll just stay here until this wears off. As a matter of fact, I think I may just sleep the whole business off. Nightmares in this place. What are you doing? Has anyone ever told you you have a distinctly sobering effect? Not since I was a kid. You almost won with those crazy kisses. Well, well, I want this person. Well, you can't have her. Why not? Because she doesn't belong to you. Well, I think she does. Well, I know she doesn't. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, you take half and I'll take half. What? You work for Solomon. You are not Solomon. You don't think I look like that handsome double? Well, I have the same broad jawline and dark complexion. Here, check this profile from the left. That's my bad side. I have other things I could be doing, you know. All right. I won't detain you any longer. You can have her. What? She's yours. I don't understand. Take her. I don't want her. Are you up to another one of your tricks? No. Look, you are not getting blood this time. I've been hassled, degraded, and broken of all self-respect. For once, I've decided not to implore devious means of obtaining a soul, and you start nagging me. Can't you take a simple gift? You're sincere, aren't you? Absolutely straight. Thank you, devil. I'll have to put a mark for you in the good book for this. Oh, <laughs> I prefer we kept this a little secret, you know, a secret between angel and devil. Oh, no, no, no. I couldn't possibly do that. I have a report to make, you know. Oh, go ahead. Make it. But will they really believe I gave her to you? Why not? Have you ever reported a gift from a devil before? This woman was not a gift. She was mine from the very beginning. Oh, no. You can't take her while I'm here. Not until we battle to the finish, and I'm refusing to do that. You might say I'm giving her to you without prolonging this war. Well... Well, nothing. I'm going to have to check with someone higher up about this. I mean, I'm not even sure I could take it gift from you. <laughs> See? You acknowledge that she is a gift? You're confusing me. Good, good news. Good news. Come in, good news. This is Soul Man requesting additional information concerning a case of belonging. Good news. Come in, good news.
This is Soul Man. Please clear Channel 7 concerning additional information. Concerning a case of belonging. Good news. Come in, good news. Good news. What are you oh. doing? Sorry. Make a joke. This is odd. I can't seem to get through. No, I'm afraid you're either going to have a battle or forfeit. I couldn't possibly accept anything else. Well, I've decided to forfeit because your presence is too strong for me. That's too easy. I'm tired. Is this another one of your tricks? Who, me? No. Oh, besides, I have to report in by six, and there's no use being late if I'm going to be empty-handed. Why? Oh, they'll beat me. Tie me up by my thumbs. It sounds painful. Painful. And then I'll have to work in the pits. Well, a little hard work never hurt anyone. Working, shoveling, 250 degrees, 24 hours a day. Hmm. Separated from crazy kisses. Oh, my. Without water. Poor devil. Oh, it, it's not so bad. I mean, for every soul you bring in, you get black stars by your name. And for every 700 stars, you get an ice cube. How many stars do you get for a soul? Depends. The maximum is three. It must take a long time to reach 700. Well, ice cubes are scarce. Is she a three star? Oh, I'm sure she is, and I only need three more stars to complete my first 700. And if I don't bring her in, I'll lose all my stars. Well, that's not fair, taking all your stars. You're telling me. I wish there was something I could do, but... <laughs> don't worry about me. I'll survive. <laughs> uh, what, what if I were to loan her to you? Huh? Well, I could let you claim her, and then I could send down for a transfer later on after you've gotten your ice cube. Oh, I don't know. It's the best I can offer. Well, it might work if no one's wise to us. Well, I still have to make my report, but your people never see our books anyway. You never can tell. There are spies everywhere. Be serious. All right. What do you expect in return? Nothing. We don't deal that way. Then you should start. Come on, I'll help you get her up. Oh, if you left, I could get her up myself. I have to touch her to get the transfer. Right. Whoa. This is odd. She's a bit heavy. Yeah. Well, you stay on that side and I'll take the other. Take her feet. Oh, this is odd. I've never run across a case like this. Neither have I. If neither one of us can move her, then who does she belong to? Limbo. Did you say something? No. Uh, never mind. We must be hearing things. Let's try again. This woman belongs in Limbo. Who's there? A representative of that place. Limbo? Yes. Never heard of you. Oh, yes, you have. We're very in this time of year. Well, how can they be here? Don't ask me. They're from your side of the fence. Step aside. This woman is mine. Limbo can't take this person. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah! Then you just watch. Wait a second. Limbo can't take this person. And why not? We'd already decided where she was going. Your petty decisions can't restrain me. Well, this is very odd. I don't even believe in Limbo. Who does? I do! Ah, oh, you don't count. I'll show you how much I don't count. What's the matter? Having problems? My difficulty stems from you hovering over her. Step back. Buzz off! Oh, sit down. Let's see what this voice can do. She doesn't get up. What's wrong? Hmm. Funny. We've been having that problem all day. You ever considered that maybe she doesn't belong to you? No, I never really thought about that. Well, think about it now. Well, this is very odd. If, if I can't move her, and you can't move her, and Limbo can't move her, then who does she belong to? I don't know. Sorry I'm late, folks. Had other pressing matters to attend to. Hope you weren't waiting too long. Uh -huh. 
What, what, what are you doing with that? This one's ours, all right. Wait a minute, you didn't answer my question. I haven't got time to. But I, on what grounds do you claim this person? Taxes, evasion of taxes. What? Well, I'll be. Son of a. Taxpayer. two puppets, a boy puppet and a girl puppet. There's also a puppet master, but he's not in this story. Day after day, the puppets entertain the children of the neighborhood. They dance with each other. They fought with one another. And they even hit each other. The work was so very hard, and the hours were so very long, but they did not complain. The only time the puppets had to themselves was at night, when the puppet master was asleep. Even so, this pleased them not at all, for without the puppet master's permission, they couldn't move a muscle. They couldn't even talk to one another. They so, so wanted desperately to talk to each other. You see, they were in love. And what's so sad about the whole affair is that neither of them knew the other one cared. You can imagine how hard it was for them, standing so close to one another like that, loving, and at the same time, unloved. Day after day, the puppets entertain the children of the neighborhood. And night after night, they stood limply beside one another. One evening, after a particularly grueling day, something extraordinary happened. This did not go unnoticed. The boy puppet was surprised, of course. Nothing like this had ever happened before. While it was quite as small thing as things go, Perhaps nothing would have come of it at all if something else wouldn't have happened at this very moment. You can imagine how surprised he was, and just then, it happened again. He was quite properly shocked. After all, this was only the second time anything like this had ever happened before. It took some getting used to. It was then that it occurred to him that the arm had moved by itself. It was a terribly blasphemous thought. But after all that he had seen, it was understandable that he should think it. And then he wondered to himself if possibly the arm had a will of its own. And maybe he had a will of his own too. He concentrated very hard. He struggled and struggled. And ever so slowly, he had done it. He had moved his arm. If he could move his arm, why not his hand? If he could move his arm and his hand, why not his head? He could move his arm and his hand and his head. Why not his body? And his other arm? And his legs? And his feet? He was alive. He touched his face. He looked at himself. He stretched himself. He was alive. she stood, the one thing that meant more to him than even life itself. He had never seen her look so lovely as she did now. He had never seen her look so desirable. He had never seen her look so lonely or so unmoved. He untied her arms. But she only slumped forward. He untied her legs. He fell down. He so wanted to awaken in her the fire that had awakened in him. He found no flame at all. He so wanted to share with her the thrill of being alive. He found no hint of joy. Perhaps if she could touch herself as he himself had touched, 
Perhaps if she could see herself, as he himself had seen. Perhaps if she could stretch herself, as he himself had stretched. But she did not respond. He did everything he could to rouse her. Just when he was about to give up all hope. Could it be, he thought, that she too at last had begun to doubt? Could it be, he thought, that she too at last had begun to waver? Her faith, he found, was stronger than his, and her faith would not let her doubt. He did everything he could to bring her to life. There was no life in her at all. So he knew what he must do. Sadly, he tied the strings to her lovely legs. And he tied the strings to her beautiful arm. He kissed her one last time. And then he tied the strings to his own legs. And he tied the strings to his own arms. And he stood as he had always stood before. Once again, the puppets entertained the children of the neighborhood. They danced with each other. They fought with one another. And they even hit each other. It was hard for the boy puppet, of course, because he knew that the puppet master wasn't really there, that he had never really been there. But he went on anyway as if he believed, just so that he could be near the girl puppet, so that after a hard day of entertaining the children, at night, he could stand there beside her. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, I bring to you a story of a spectacular adventure, a tale of brave men, of bold deeds and of stout hearts, of valiant warriors and vile magicians, of fierce struggles in far-off lands, a tale of how one man lived through it all. I'm going to tell you a tale about me. Ladies and gentlemen, I now present to you The Adventures of Christopher the Grand! <clears throat> the Adventures of Christopher the Grand! Thank you. You're much too kind. Our story begins in a small town. It was there that I lived many years ago. I worked as an apprentice in my uncle's blacksmith shop. It was a boring life, to say the least. But every now and then, an adventurer would come in to buy a new sword or suit of armor. Oh, they used to tell such wonderful stories, the adventurers did. I wanted to live a life like them, charging into battle with dragons, finding damsels in distress, saving damsels in distress, marrying damsels in distress. Oh, what better life could there be? 
Uh, it'd surely be better than working 12 hours a day in a scorching hot room. Uh, finally, I couldn't take it any longer. I needed to get away. I wanted to live an exciting life. I didn't have any specific plans, but I knew I couldn't travel alone. Too many monsters and bandits and evil spirits lived out there. So I posted a proclamation on the front of the local tavern. It read as follows. Read ye, read ye. The talented Christopher the Grand, that's me, is looking for a group of strong, experienced adventurers to accompany him on his journeys around the world. Please meet him in front of the tavern at sundown tomorrow. So when the time came, I took, borrowed a sword from my uncle's blacksmith shop, traveled to the tavern, and waited. Poor old Porco Gordon. Oh, give him a chance, will you? I'm sure he'll be able to help us. He did say he was talented. Poor William. Give him a chance. Sir, sir, are you waiting for Christopher the Grand? Uh, uh I'm sorry you, uh, you startled me. Uh, I am Christopher the Grand, uh, at your service. And who might you be? My name is Nora, and this is my brother Tagalong. Tagalong? It's just a nickname, sir. His real name is Beauregard. But please, we need your help. Aha. Uh -huh. A damsel in distress. Yes? Many years ago, an evil wizard put a curse on Tagalong. We've tried everything we can to remove it, but have not found a way. We were hoping you could help us. Hmm. A curse? What kind of curse? Tree bark Tagalog. Sir? Tree bark Tagalog. I'm sorry, sir. I won't be able to help you if you don't speak something I can understand. But that's just it. He can't. That's what the curse has done to him. We can only think of one way to remove it. And what might that be? We must find the wizard that put the curse on Tagalong and force him to take it off. A wizard? You mean a real, live, honest-to-God wizard? The, the, the kind that can turn you into a toad or, or control your mind or burn you to a crisp? Exactly! Well, I'm not so sure. Oh, please, sir. I promise you'll be rewarded. A reward, you say? Yes. One hundred gold coins. It's all we can afford. Hmm. Where does this wizard live? He lives in the dark woods over yonder! The dark woods over yonder. The dark woods over yonder, are you crazy? I'm afraid not, sir. Three years ago, because three is the magic number in all fairy tales, Tagalong and I were traveling through the dark woods over yonder with some trading goods for our father. He was sick at the time, so we took care of business for him. But alas, a roadman stopped us, demanding of us that we give him all our supplies, or he'd destroy us with his magic. He claimed we were trespassing. We resisted. And then he cursed Tagalong and gave us one last chance. We turned over our wagon. And then he disappeared, wagon and all. We had to travel 20 miles to get back home. Please, sir, if you truly are an experienced adventurer, help us. We must return to the dark woods over yonder. But we can't do it ourselves. But, but, but monsters live there. Big monsters with, with teeth like this and, 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 and long claws like this and... And they drool and growl and hunt people down like this. Give a bug of crack! Tag along! I'm ashamed of you. How could you use such language? Shimoto, how can you understand him? It takes practice. But seriously, sir, will you help us? Uh, 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 the, the dark woods over yonder, I've never heard such nonsense. Surely, someone as bold and brave as yourself would be unable to handle anything that tried to hurt us. Well, yes. Please? But, but, but I, Please? but, but, so, all right, I'll go, I'll go. Oh, I'm sure we won't regret this at all, Tagalong. I think he's a very capable man. At least, that's what I hope. So that's how it all began. For the next three weeks, we traveled through the dark woods over yonder. At first, things went fine. We had plenty of food, and the weather was good for the most part. That covers the first day. For the next 20, however, we weren't so lucky. It rained so much we were constantly soaked, and the fog was so bad we could hardly find our way. Before we knew it, <laughs> we were lost. Borkle, borkle, boo, boo. I don't think we'll ever find him, tag along. Borkle, imp. I'm beginning to agree with you. I don't think our friend here is much help at all. Yeah, I heard that. Well, good! Tagalong's right. We've no food, no fire, and we're lost in the middle of nowhere. It's not my fault! Yes, it is. 
Remember about a week ago, when we found that river? You wanted to cross it. It was very deep in the middle, so I suggested we find a better place to cross. But no! You had to charge full speed into the river and practically drown. Tagalong and I practically drowned ourselves trying to get you out. Not only that, but your manly maneuver cost us nearly all our supplies. At least we saved the food. A lot of good that did us. You lost it the day after. But a bear ate it. What could I have done? A bear cub, Christopher. You could have chased it away. That's oh. not true. I the, the cub, the, the, the bear, but... Nothing but a coward. I am not a coward! <laughs> what was that? Girl, Bree, Gork, Zorgo? Tagalong's right. We should take cover. If it's a monster, I... No, I'm not coming with you. What? I said I'm not a coward and I mean it. Ta Christopher, you can't be serious. Go! Just be careful. Don't worry. Christopher, you're an idiot! Where are you, you little thief? Show yourself! I'll rip you head off with my bare hands when I'm a finding of you! <laughs> Who's the use? Ah, oh, never mind. Get out of my way. No! I will not let you pass! Ah, a friend of the little thief, are you? I don't know who you're talking about. Stand aside, or pay the price in blood. No! Very well. Then you can die. Ah! 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 Took him, I go. Hold your horses, knucklehead. You're the one causing all the trouble here. Me? What am I doing? You're trespassing on my land. Just consider the gold a little fine. Oh, I, I, oh. I'm warning you. I'm a wizard. Who are you? I'm Uncle the Magnificent. Wizard! Extraordinaire. I knew it. That's him. Now, would you crazy commoners kindly care to clarify why you're clashing your cleavers and causing such a commotion? We came to find you, Merkel. Remember a few years ago? You caught us trespassing. For it, you cursed my brother and stole our wagon. Come back for more, eh? Beef of breath, brick breath, the last send to you. We've come to make you remove the curse, Merkel. And we're not leaving until you do. <laughs> remove your face from my presence before I fry you to a crisp. I, Christopher the Grand, will answer to no one! Christopher! He's... Christopher uh, the Grand? Time's up. Yes, you know him? He's still here. I'm going to have to do something about it. I'm going to I'm going to boom! Hey, well, what happened to the lights? Christopher, help! Hey, where are you, you little thief? Uh, Take a dab. Ouch! Get your hands off me! Hey! Ouch! I'm a bat. I'm out of here! Help! Ah! Not at a bat. Christopher. Christopher. Christopher! Wake up! Get away from me! Look. I'm sorry about almost killing you before. It was a mistake, I promise. Who are you? My name is Carlos, your uncle, sir. My uncle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, you got a little worried. See, you've been gone such a long time. He, he's been worried about you. You sent out adventurers to look for you. I hear you and your friends talking about coming to the dark woods over yonder! So I assume that's where you go since you leave with them. I follow you here, now I'm not finding you. Come on, we gotta get back. The sooner I be getting you there, the sooner I be getting paid. Not until we get the curse off. Wait a minute, where are they? Where's who? No one tag along, you idiot, my friends! Oh, the wizard be taking them. Come on. The wizard, we have to find them right away! No, no. 
See, rescuing of cursed cooks, not in me job description. But you have to help! If you don't, the wizard will probably kill them before I ever find his tower. That's it? You just giving up? What kind of friend are you? What can I do? Look, how long you been traveling with them? Three weeks. Three weeks? Christopher, three is magic number in all of the fairy tales. I should have known. Christopher, Christopher. <clears throat> Sometimes bad things might happen. Sometimes the tears may fall. But through your grief, you must find a way and stand tall through it all. You mustn't let the wall stand that blocks your path to life. With a, you must find a way through your tears to put an end to your strife. Now is not a time for weakness, nor a time for apathy. You have a job to be done. What it is is plain to see. Victory, it's within your grasp if you only reach for the sky. You must turn your tears of sorrow into a battle cry. Pretty good, huh? I make it up myself. You're right. You coming? I don't know. I'll give you a reward. 50 gold coins. That's almost 75. Nothing. This small papyrus. 100 gold coins. My entire reward if I get the curse off of Tagalong. Okay, easy deal. Let's Great. start moving. Yes. it sounds, we found Merkel's tower in only three hours. Uh, it's amazing. Uh, it, the tower was like a gigantic maze. This didn't stop us, though. We managed to sneak in without being noticed. It seemed like forever, but we finally found the dungeon where Noah and Tagalong were being held prisoner. Carlos, come quick! I found them! It's about time. Hurry, untie them. This one. No, this one. No, 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 no. Yes, no. this way. Okay. Zigzag. What's he doing here? I thought he tried to kill you. What's a mistake? I promise. It's a long story. Now come on, we have to find Marco and get out of here before we can... What's your rush, imbecile? You can stay as long as you like. Surrender, Marco. You're outnumbered. Working together this time, eh? Still may not help to you. I'll still fry all your fannies. Hamina! Freeze! Be careful! Tag along! No! Carlos! No! Uh oh. Ah! Be careful! He knows how to use magic to. Just. Oh, shoot! Aha! Drop it, Merkel! Mom, leave me alone. No, no, you have no, no. I'm not your mother. You have to get up. No, no. 
Magical number in all fairy tales? Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. <sighs> 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 Chris Christopher, uh -oh. Uh -oh. you. Both knees, both knees. No, it's like that only the one knee, only the one knee. <laughs> Other knee, you idiot! Christopher, don't listen to him! Tell me a story. You'll never get away with this, Marco! Oh, I think I will. <laughs> never thought old Mag could be so into the staff, did you? <laughs> oh, idiots. Mag! <laughs> Sometimes, all it takes is a lady's touch. Oh, oh, oh my, oh, 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 my head. He's Carlos, Tagalong, wake up! Get up. We won! We won! We won! Yeah, I seized that. I believe you have something for us, Merkel. Uh, what might that be? Oh, oh, removing the curse. Yeah, yeah. Of that did come to mind. Okay, let's see what I have here. Uh, pigeon toes, badger brains, some gold. I believe that's mine. Oh, it might, it might happen to be yours. Yeah, let me see if I can get it off. Hurry, it. Hurry, it. Hurry, it. We don't have all day, Merkel. Put the shakes on. Sorry. It's already been three minutes. Sorry. Magical number and all fairy tales. I know. You know how that always happens. <sighs> Forget the gold. How about the curse? Oh, the curse. Um, well, more yeah, of it. I've got some. Christian Take movies. that. Uh, yeah. You're not gonna now let him get. You're not gonna let him get away that easy, are you? Promise you'll let us leave the tower safely. Wizard's oath. Wizard's oath. Uh, do I have to? Yes. Okay, wizard's oath. Now can I leave? Get up! Thank you. I am not knowing about this, Christopher. Seems like a bad idea to me. Christopher, the ground! You'll never sleep again! I'll hunt you down and kill you like the scum you are! <laughs> I told you you'd be regretting it. Here. This had better work. Rebel, Keeble, Gork, Norgal, Zog? Why that lying little? <sighs> it's all right, Tagalong. We'll find a way to free the curse off you somehow. Gork, Zog, but uh, don't try to cover me. Just go away. Go away. Go away. Go away. Go away. Go away. Fine, if you feel so strong. Yes, is it a wonderful? No. The least oh, you can do is say thank you! Last, I can hear your real voice! Pay attention! And thank you, Chris. Thank you so much. Hey. 
<laughs> oh, thank you, Carlos. <laughs> ah, everything worked out in the end. Uh, Merkel never bothered us for the rest of our existence in the uh, town where I was a blacksmith. But, uh, uh, well, um, not much else happened, actually. Let's just say my uncle thought he was working at a blacksmith for a while, uh, as a, at a tannery for a while when I got back uh, using my hide. But, uh, other than that, not but much. Chris? Yes, dear. Aren't you forgetting something? Yes. Nora and I got married a year later. I guess I finally found my damsel in distress. And now for the moral of the story. Uh... Maybe I can help. When things get rough, always stand by your friends. You never know when you might need someone to help you out and return a favor. And when things do get tough, don't give in to despair. You've got to keep on fighting. It's the only way your problems will ever be solved. And if at all possible, make quick buck while you do it too. What kind of moral is that? <coughs> I'm the hero. I can be saying what I want. You're the hero? Yes, I'm the hero. I'm the one who did everything. You, the one who fainted. I did not faint. You sure did in the forest. I just tripped. Oh, much better. And we all lived happily ever after. I did not faint. Or at I least said we hero. tried I'll to. I'll show you who did. Come on, come on. strength you're feeling on your bones, lady. Primitive animal strength. There's no arguing with that. Oh, no. Now you stay there. Right there. Don't move. Don't budge an inch. I'll be right with you. In a minute. In a minute. Take this off. I can't breathe under here. I can't breathe. Come back. Come back here. Oh, scream. Scream all you want. You have my permission. It's not going to help you, though. Not here it won't. We're quite alone. No conditions, I insist on that. I won't accept any conditions of any kind. That's a point for you to keep in mind. There, that's it. Each of us in its proper place. You like flirting, don't you, lady? Do anything for a good time. I wasn't flirting with you, I swear I wasn't. That's the truth, please let me go. Let you go? After all the trouble of dragging you through those back alleys? After getting wet? Oh no, not a chance. Not tonight, lady. I've got something else in mind for you. I don't know what you want, really. As far as I'm concerned, none of this ever happened. I won't tell anyone anything. Please, let me go. Oh, cry. Yes, cry. Your tears are beautiful. I can watch you all night. It's as natural for you to cry as it is for the tiger to stalk its prey and gorge itself. Cry, go ahead. Human history is filled with countless relevant examples. Why did you choose me? Why of everyone did you have to choose me? Fate! Destiny! You just don't get it, do you? I stood in the doorway of that decrepit stationary store for three hours, for more than who knows how many. I let six... Seven, eight of you go by, and then you came click-clacking along in those high-heeled shoes of yours, and I knew you were the one. It was you. At first, I had an almost uncontrollable impulse to finish you off right there, finish you off and be done with it. But when I touched you, when my fingers grabbed hold of you, a voice deep inside me said, no, don't, wait. Let it be something special and, and sacred even. A ritual, 
a ritual. <laughs> not that inhuman. That human! That human! Nobody understands. Not even Schopenhauer or Nitsky. They all have that carrot dangling in front of your nose. Be more than you are. Transcend. Go above. Beyond. Up, up, up. But no, that isn't it. I say, be less than you are. To be what you are. Be less, less, less than you are. You're... A what? Nothing. Nothing. Insane. Is that what you wanted to say? Insane. Oh, I hope so. I am insane, right? You wanted to say it. I didn't tell you. You knew. You sensed it. And I agree with your judgment. Emphatically. You don't meet people like me every day. People with my ideas. With the courage of my convictions. I am insane. Say it! Hey, listen, Not man. until I give you permission! May I have your permission? Is that clear? Between us, between you and me, there's only one thing that matters. My strength, my physical superiority, this fist and this arm. Here tonight I say to you, I am insane so I can be human. You see how everything just falls into place? You don't understand anything, do you? Linguistic concepts are too much for your little female bird brain. But that's all right. You have other assets. Nice to touch. You're soft. Your blood is warm and alive. Now do I end your miserable life now quickly and suddenly? All right. We'll do it. You sit there, right there. We'll do it now properly. That was a little better. Sometimes the tiger has to claw the tigress. Then she understands what it's all about. Let me explain. Did I give you permission to speak? May I have your permission? All right. You're learning. You can speak to me now if you wish. I, I, I'm a married woman. I've been married for the past six years. My, my husband is an honest, hardworking man. We, we have our own house. It isn't fully paid. We're not what you call what lot by any means. We have two small children, two little girls. Enough! I, I can't stand babbling women. You can cry, but don't battle, is that clear? Any woman who leaves her kids to go tramping around at night deserves what she gets. What? I'm sorry, I have your permission. All right, now. I, I wasn't tramping around all night. I, I, I belong to a bridge club. Me and a few of the other girls, it, it, it all goes to charity. I, I... Continue. I didn't say stop, did I? Uh, we, we meet once, once a week. I, I, I'm in every other night. I get out so little that when I get the chance... Your I... husband takes you out on Saturdays? All husbands take their wives out on Saturdays. Not for some time now. I swear to you, that's the truth. It's so hard to f find a, a babysitter, even if you can't find somebody reliable. Please don't. I want you to kiss me. I said, I want you to kiss me. I can't, please. Pick up your head. Pick it up. I'll accept that for now. But you'd better learn and learn quickly. I'm not to be contradicted. Not in word, thought, or deed. Remember that, lady. It's not myself I'm concerned about right now, but I do have a husband and a family. All of them will suffer. Why don't you consider them? Why don't you, you consider don't them? You don't have my permission to speak. You can cry whenever you want, however. That much I'll allow you because you're a woman. There's no reason to cry. There's good in you. I can see it in your eyes. Isn't there someone whom you love very much? Besides myself, no one. There must be someone. Y your mother? Don't make me laugh. A wife. Do you think I'm stupid? Then friends. No one! I have no one but myself and that's all that matters. Me. Myself. The fulfillment of my own body and my own primitive soul. Sometimes I walk along the streets at night and my feet, as I walk, my feet feel like large, soft paws in the moon shining overhead so brightly, so primeval. I just want to, to raise my head and let loose from inside of me some wild, strange sound. A sound that hasn't been heard for thousands of years, but it's inside of us, you see. Deep deep inside each and every one of us. Tonight, I don't have to hold anything in. Tonight, I have you 
to play with, to destroy, to do whatever I want with. After that, I don't care. I want you to kiss me. Now! Please. You don't want to? Not good enough. Please leave me alone. Please oh, we don't have to speak alone. anymore. We'll be quiet and still and listen to our heartbeats pounding, pounding. That which was deepest in us will rise, will overcome us for a moment. And then we will be ourselves. The essence, the primal force, free of all hypocrisy, free of all pretending. Unsatisfactory. You will hold your lips to mine when I give you the signal. Better. There are signs of progress. I'm glad to see some learning is taking place. My arms are sore. Will you untie me? Did you speak? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. Can, can I ask you a favor? Did you say something? I have a favor to ask of you. All right. Go ahead. The blood isn't circulating in my arms. I'd really appreciate it if you'd untie me. I won't try to get away. I don't believe you. Not for a single solitary minute do I believe you. However, I have no objection. Tonight the word fear is in your vocabulary, not mine. Of course you do realize that if you do try to get away, I'll have to punish you, maybe even kill you right here on the spot. You can never tell when I lose control of myself. Be careful. Thank you. See, there is good in you. You can be reasonable. May I have one? No. It's cold here. L look, it, you can make some easy money if you just let me go. You can phone my husband. He'd gladly give it to you. You could ask for... Five, ten thousand dollars. A man lives in his mind, not in a place. No use explaining it to you, I'd be wasting my time. Idiots! A world full of idiots and illiterates too dense to comprehend the most basic laws governing their own existence. You all follow one another like sheep. One up the street and lunch back the street into the subway and bed attack millions of sheep. To say. I'm not giving lessons in democratic principles, lady. Everybody has something to say. Everybody has an opinion to give. But do they have the background, the training, the mental discipline to give you an informed opinion on the facts? Oh no, not that. Battle, right? You think that? What I write about? Do you know? Reiterate my line of reasoning to present me with a brief summation of its points. Begin. Now. I, I, I said, begin. Now. I think that what you were saying is that in a democracy where everyone has a voice in the government, despite uh, ability or intelligence... Is that what you think? Well, isn't that what you Who wrote think? the Divine Comedy? Uh, Dante? When was the Civil War? Between 1861 and 1865. How do you spell concatenation? Concatenation. C-O-N-C-A-T-N-A-T-I-O-N. How do you spell physiology? Physiology. P-H-Y-S-I-O-L-O-G-Y. Miscegenation? Miscegenation. M-I-C. S-A-T-I-O-N. S-C-E-G-E-N-H-E-I-O-N! Bird brain, don't you dare speak loosely to me. Not unless you're willing to pay the consequences. I'm sorry. May I please have a glass of water? I'm not your servant. I'll get it if you want me to. Sit there and shut up! Going someplace? No, I was just... Never mind what you were just. You can't play those tricks with me, understand? I know what goes on, all right? You're all the same, every one of you. Get back to your chair. <laughs> I'm running out of socks, damn it! If you try anything, it'll be the last time. I hope you've had enough education to understand that. You did go to school, didn't you? You probably won't believe it, but I graduated from college. So did my husband. We were in the same class. He, he, that's where we met. That explains your ignorance thoroughly and completely. I remember once I walked into a class at some stupid college. I thought I would listen to the wisdom of the ages, the prophet speaking through the intelligent and refined mind of a scholar. 
I just started laughing like crazy. I couldn't help myself. I just had to get up and stagger out of there. And that was as far as I got in college. You're not a graduate? Did I tell you I was? Well, no, it's just that the way you talk, your vocabulary, I thought for College is for imbeciles, for sheep. Bah, bah, sheep. I taught myself everything I know by reading, by studying, by perusing the prophets, the philosophers, the anthropologists, the poets, the scientists. Every night I read whatever I could lay my hands on. Years and years of reading and studying until, until I gave myself a diploma. It was a doctorate in comprehensive ontology. And I understood then. I saw through the lies and the hypocrisy. They wanted to dehumanize me, yes, precisely that. They wanted to make a sheep out of me. That which is purest in me, the animal savage, innocent, primitive, childlike. That I had to save. I had to salvage and redeem, and it's for that, for the right to be human as I must be to live, that I offer you in sacrifice on this evening of May the 13th. Does he have to be a living human being? You poor bird brain. You poor, ignorant bird brain. What do you know about being? What do you know about your own body? about your own elementary physical processes of your own body. Genetic evolution, heredity, the giraffe's neck, number one, the monkey's tail, number two. Those things are going to disappear like that. How does it happen? Let's think, oh, that's how. But you wouldn't know anything about that. Well, I'm interested in it. For a number of years, I subscribed to one of the science magazines. We come closer and closer to the end, which is in the beginning. The beginning is in the end, the end is in the beginning. Time is like an egg, and life, life is like the chicken that lays that egg. Is, is that original? Do you think it is? Yes, I like it, I do. Nights and nights alone in here, studying, reading the masters, looking deep, deep inside myself. Despite everything, I can't help but enjoy listening to you. I mean, before I married, I, I was a social worker with the Department of Welfare. It was part of my job to direct people into the type of work they were suited for, uh, temperamentally, educationally. It was very absorbing work. I hated to leave. But, but why don't you go to college? I, I mean, I think you could have made a very good instructor. At one time, that was my ambition. To teach in college. To be a professor of linguistics. Those imbeciles! They aren't worth spitting on! I don't need them. I don't need anybody. What happened? Did I give you permission to speak? I failed the entrance exam. I can't speak French, and they don't take you unless you can speak French. Oh, I tried, I tried, but I just couldn't do it. I couldn't. Go ahead, laugh. Isn't that what you feel like doing? No, not in the least. It's just that I just don't understand. It shouldn't have been difficult for you. See all these books? French books. I took courses in it. It wouldn't sink in. Call it an emotional block. Call it whatever you want. I have other ambitions now. Life is what counts, not degrees or accomplishments. I don't accept that, do you hear me? I don't accept that. But, but you can still do it. It isn't too late. What are you talking about? Do you know how old I am? I'd say 36, 37. 42 in August. I'm not interested anymore. But 42 isn't old. You're in the prime of life, and isn't that the time to get an education? Are you deaf? I told you they wouldn't take me. Only because you didn't speak French. I remember the trouble I had passing my French exams. You speak French. Oui, mon petit. Get back to your chair. I'm in my chair. Not that chair. That chair. That chair. I don't want to hear another word out of you, understand? Too much talking, anyway. Everybody has something to say, but do they know what they say? Do they care? They don't talk to each other. They talk to themselves. They talk to their own egos. There's no communication between people. Did I tell you to shut up? Listen, you might learn something. There's no communication between people anymore. Everybody's inside of himself, inside his own little egotistical shell. You meet somebody in the street and they say, how are you? Do you think they care how you are? <laughs> what a mockery. You say, I'm fine. And they don't even listen. You're not concerned with human values, only with making money. Are you going to shut up? You're not concerned with human values, 
only with grabbing as much money as I can get their hands on. It's all they think about. Money. The goddess. They're all after it. Well, what's important? I mean, finding one's identity. That they don't care about. That's why there are no individuals today. That's right. They all talk about the same subjects, do the same things, do the same type of work. It's as if they were all coming out on the assembly line. Couldn't have put it better. That's precisely what conformity is. Yes, I know. I know. And it's getting so bad, people are beginning to resemble one another. I mean, actually, physically resemble one another. I couldn't contradict you. I see it with my own eyes. I've been living in this place for seven years. And you know what the landlady said to me when I went up to pay the rent last time? Sorry, no vacancies. She didn't even recognize me. She didn't know you? It's awful. The point is, everybody's beginning to resemble one another. That's what we're up against. It's no secret. Go ahead. Try to live in this world. Just try. It's becoming impossible. I know. Impossible. That's just the word. And what do you think will happen once this population explosion we're having gets moving, huh? Can you imagine what it's going to be like with three million people all standing at the same bus stop, all wearing the same hat and coat? We won't even be able to breathe. You bet we won't. Chaos. It'll be sheer Nobody chaos. Listens. With but millions does anybody millions listen? of people, millions nobody of sheep. Listens. I said nobody listens. You put your finger right on it. <laughs> when it's too late, that's when they'll decide to do something about it. And they accept it. That's what gets me. They accept it. Out on the island where I live, that's where you really see it happening. I mean, the extent to which people resemble one another. They do the same types of things, talk about the same things. I, I've seen it grow and it gets worse and worse. But it's not so much that we're all going to resemble one another. I mean, after all, that's only physical. But we're going to have the same social attitudes. That's something to think about. The same social attitudes. That's where the real danger is. You telling me? I've been fighting it for years. Well, you should fight it. We should all fight it. And what about the atomic bomb? What about the atomic bomb? Do you think they know what they're doing? Those lunatics don't know from one minute to the next what they're doing. Let them blow us all up. We don't count. There's a million more where we came from. They must think we're a bunch of fools. Are we fools? I mean, half the time I don't know what to do with myself. There's nobody I can really talk to. And as for intellectual excitement or appreciation of the arts, it's another world. I have to come to the city just for a breath of fresh air. But the school system's... The whole system's be... filled with idiots. They're driving out the middle class. That's what they're doing. What's the use of talking? It... it helps. It does. It's good to talk about these things. You're making a mistake, you know. I could teach you French. There's no reason why I you shouldn't... I told you it's too late. But it's not too late. It's really not. Do you know how old I am? Forty-two. How did you know? Because I know you and I know what you're capable of. Look. Here. Sit down. We'll start at the beginning. Uh, which book do you want to use? Well, this one looks as if it'll do. All right. Start at the beginning. All right. Bonjour, monsieur. Aren't you even going to try it? Bonjour, mademoiselle. Very good. Je m'appelle Gloria. Comment vous allez-vous? Je m'appelle Benjamin. Uh, no, not quite. Um, hold your lips like this and let the words kind of run into each other. Uh, like this. Je m'appelle Benjamin. Je m'appelle Benjamin. <laughs> now you've got it. Comment allez-vous, monsieur? Oh, très bien, merci. Et vous? Oh, pas trop mal, merci. Mais mon frère est malade. C'est dommage. Je regret the book. <laughs> Wonderful. That was really good. It didn't sound bad. Bad? We sounded just like a French couple chatting. You must have been joking when you said you couldn't learn French. It seems a lot easier now, but... What are we doing? Do you know how I live? How I support myself? I'm a postman, a letter carrier. I go from door to door, ringing bells and opening mailboxes. Me, with what I know, with my education, they lay down the law. This is what you are. This is how you have to live your life. I don't accept that. I don't accept those conditions. It's criminal. Just look at how far you've come through your own efforts. It would be a pity if you gave up everything now. You could become an instructor, I know it, there's no doubt in my mind. Try, it's for your own good. It's not as simple as you're making it seem. I'm not saying it's simple, but why should you have to suffer? 
You have the courage to live by your own convictions without listening to the lies. When I think of the people that are allowed to get ahead now, you don't have to tell me. It makes my blood boil. Just because they've got a college degree. You wait. Japan is going to crush us like a bunch of ants if we don't wise up. You don't know how right you are. My husband, he has absolutely no talent in anything. I don't even think he's ever said or done an original thing in his entire life. Do you know what he is? Listen to this. An assistant executive. An assistant executive in one of the largest textile factories in the city, and he makes every year $100,000 for sitting behind a desk. I bet he's a college graduate. Huh, and do you know why? He used to sit through every lecture, every muscle completely rigid, and he would stare up at the instructor with wide open eyes as if listening to his sermon. He had earplugs in his ears. He hates listening to anybody but himself. Oh, and at the end of the lecture, he'd go up to the professor and say, Hello, my name is William Hamlin, and I'd like you to know, Professor, that your lecture tonight was brilliant. They're not interested in the person, not what the individual can do. All they care about is how many years did you take each course, how many points you have in each subject. You need 12 points in social psychology to become a supervisor at the post office. I couldn't even get that. It's called for your degree, Ben. Prove to them that you're a lot smarter and a lot better than any of them. I know you can do it. What makes you so sure? Because I have confidence in you. You mean that? Yes, I do. Here. Uh, bonjour, monsieur. Bonjour, mademoiselle. <laughs> Je m'appelle Gloria. Comment vous allez vous Je m'appelle Benjamin. I'd like to. Really, I wasn't lying about anything I said. You are going to try, aren't you? Maybe. It's something I've always wanted. Then you'll certainly get it. Here. Do these three exercises on this page. I can do it. But what about your husband? Uh, he wouldn't know if the roof fell in on him. He'll think I'm playing bridge with the girls. We meet at the same place? In front of the stationery store? It's 7.30. 7.30. Au revoir. Au revoir.